All right, I have started it. Do you want the recording paused? I guess not. Hi, Pat, this is Nicholas. Uh, could you uh, turn off your video? There is a button somewhere that says stop video. Right, thank you.
Welcome to HIV is not a crime, National Training Academy, 4. The closing ceremony will begin shortly. Please make yourselves comfortable. And enjoy this last session of a great conference. Hey everyone, and welcome to the closing ceremonies of one of the best virtual conferences we've had throughout this horrible pandemic. Before we get started, I wanna to talk to you about the translation uh, that is going to be happening while you're on this conference. We have Spanish translation from Ale, Stephanie, and Jose, and they will be handling that for you. So I'm gonna turn it over to them. Okay. Uh, hola a todos. Eh, voy a dar este mensaje en español eh, primero y después en inglés. Hi everyone. I'm gonna uh, give this message first in Spanish, followed by English. Um, vamos a tener, como mencionaron, vamos a tener interpretación en la sesión de hoy eh, y los presentadores nos pueden echar la mano hablando a un ritmo moderado, en voz alta y claramente. Para los participantes, por favor, no sufran en silencio si la interpretación no está funcionando o están teniendo dificultades técnicas, déjenos saber en el chat para poder asistirles. En un momento se va a encender la interpretación y verán un globo terráqueo en la parte inferior derecha de la pantalla. Le dan clic en el globo y seleccionan el idioma en el que quieren escuchar y participar durante esta sesión. Si se unieron a la, llama, a la reunión por medio de un eh, tablet o teléfono inteligente, le van a dar clic en los tres puntos, seleccionar interpretación de idioma y de ahí seleccionan el, el, el idioma en el que quieren escuchar y participar durante esta sesión. Aquí hay que asegurarnos de hacerle clic en finalizar. And so I will now give the uh, interpretation guidelines in English. So hey everyone, uh, this session will have a simultaneous interpretation from English to Spanish and Spanish to English. Um, and for those presenting today, we um, please, please ask that you speak at a moderate pace, take breaths between sentences um, and uh, speak loudly and clearly. Um, so that we, we want to honor what you say um, and, and we need to be able to keep up. Uh, in a moment, you'll see the interpretation uh, turned on and you'll see uh, a globe on the bottom right hand side of your screen. Um, you're going to click on the globe and select the language you'd like to listen to and participate in. Um, if you are joining us from a smartphone, you can uh, access interpretation by clicking on the three dots uh, on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, select language interpretation and click on the language you'd like to listen to or and participate uh, in during the session. There's one last step here. You have to click on done and you should be all set. Um, and now if we could enable the interpretation. Perfect, we should be all set. You're good to go. That's great. Tori, why don't you kick us off? So good evening, everybody. My name is Tori Cooper. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And it's such a thrill to be here. Uh, this is my very first high neck. And, um, and I'm tired. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm every possible adjective that you can think of. I'm also sad because it's coming to a close. But we are going to close out today what we think what um, Malcolm and I think, and all the other folks, and Tammy, and so many wonderful folks who contributed to making this an experience that you will not forget, even in a digital environment. 
We're going to start off with an absolutely amazing fireside conversation, if you will, from two of the most amazing advocates that I know. Um, Malcolm, you can come on and join, and we're going to introduce our panelists, and then we're going to get right to it. We just want folks to talk and to share who they are, their work, and their experience here at INET. All right. Well, Tori, why don't you start by telling us who Tori is? I don't know what to say, so you can Google me because I'm Googleable, but I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I created a title called the Health and Equity Consultant because so much of my work is really ensuring that there are better health outcomes for all people, but particularly for trans and gender non-binary and gender expansive folks, for folks who are living with HIV and Black people. Um, I, in, in all of the work that I do, here's a lot of I statements, and I didn't want to use many today, but um, I, I think that it is absolutely necessary that all folks for whom these systems of, these oppressive systems have left out, that includes people who are living with HIV, that includes people who have a bit more melanin in our skin, uh, for whom our hair does not come out straight, all of those things, that, our, that, that we have equitable access um, to finances, to resources, to health, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my day job is the director of community engagement at the Human Rights Campaign. Um, and likewise, we're moving in a new direction, um, something that is more inclusive of all folks and not just some folks. So Malcolm, everybody here knows you, but tell folks a little bit about who you are, what you do and where you do it. Well, I don't know if everybody knows me, but I know that I am so excited to be co-hosting this closing with you. When Tammy told me that Tori was going to be co-hosting, I volunteered, okay, I'll do it. But hi, everybody, I'm Malcolm Reed. I'm the director of programs for one of the greatest organizations in the world, Thrive SS. If nobody has told you yet, Thrive stands for Transforming HIV Resentments, into victories everlasting, and the SS is support services. We are here to support Black same gender loving men living with HIV with health, to get to health equity and just to be able to thrive and live their lives while living with HIV to the fullest. And although our mission says we are here for Black same gender loving men, we're here for everybody. If you need to get into care, we are here for you. We want you to be able to reach out to us, to reach out to our incredible client services team and be able to get the medication you need, get the psychosocial support you need, get the housing you need, anything that involves those social determinants that might be keeping you out of care. You know, um, our executive director, Larry Walker, yesterday told us that there are 20,000 people living in the state of Georgia that are out of care. And we want to see that number get down to zero. And that's what we're here for. And so I started this work as a volunteer and was fortunate enough to be challenged and to start a group of, for Black gay men living with HIV over the age of 50 called the Silver Lining Project. And I am so happy to be in the third year of that magnificent project. And, you know, I really can't talk about it enough. Um, you know, those guys will be in this building in a little while to do one of our Obis roundtables, which is something that we do on a, on a weekly basis where we sit around and we just talk about different things from sex and dating. Yeah, people over 50 do have sex and do date. Um, and sometimes tonight we're going to be talking about wills and and all of that. And in between, we give them that policy and advocacy uh, information like criminalization. So that's me. That's why I'm here. That's a little bit about Thrive. So now let's talk about our amazing, amazing two first two panelists, Morris Singletary. And who was our other panelist, Tori? Octavia Lewis. How in the world did you forget? Oh, I didn't forget. I just, want, I just wanted you to say it because I, I, I yes. knew you were going to be like, Octavia. <laughs> yes, and shout out also, Octavia and I are national board, our board members of Positively Trans, and we're very, very proud of that. 
um, two folks. Uh, come up a little closer to your camera, Octavia, so the folks can get a good look at you. Oh, this is what it um, So love you, Morris. Love you, Octavia. Wow. And you, you come closer to Morris so folks can see your new teeth. Yeah, Morris, <laughs> Morris got new white teeth, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Thank you both for being here. This really is a fireside chat. It's just a conversation with two folks who we know do the work and have been doing the work for a while. So ladies first, Octavia, tell us a little bit about who you are. Wait you a know. minute, you said ladies first? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Go ahead, <Octavia>. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. 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 Yeah. Sure, boo. Um, so let me just give my little disclaimer. You know, I live in New York. So if you hear a lot of humming, that's the air conditioning in the window because that's how we do it here. So I ain't nothing going on. It's just the air conditioning humming. Um, so I am Octavia Y. Lewis. Um, I hail from South Georgia, but I reside in the Bronx. Um, I am an African-American woman of transgender um, experience um, who is of African descent. And I am a mother to two young boys. Um, I am also the transgender health coordinator for one of the largest healthcare systems in New York City, uh, Montefiore Health System. Um, but above all, I am a people's person. Like I am always learning and I, and I love being in spaces like this um, because I believe once you get to the point where you know it all, then there's nothing else left for you to do. And I hope that that never happens for, you know, many years to come. Um, because uh, again, I've learned a lot over these last couple of days. So again, I am so happy to be here and I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Murray. Thank you, sis. Oh my gosh. So um, first of all, I am thankful for the opportunity to be here. And not only here as in online, um, June 23rd will make 15 years of me being diagnosed with HIV. Yeah, oh, we tweeting, cause I got 15 this year too. Come on, sis. 32 <laughs> for me this time. Hey. Come through. This is why I am so full. Um, in the beginning, I didn't do it right. I didn't do it right for the first 10 years to be real exact. I am a product of Thrive SS. I'm a product of transforming my HIV resentment into a victory everlasting. And their support systems have gotten me to where I am. Amen. Today, not only am I more singletary living, I am the executive director of the Positive to Positive Initiative, where I work with Thrive to help make sure that people who are HIV negative stay negative, but those who are positive are linked into care. And what does care look like? It looks like Hey, I need somewhere to sleep tonight. I need to go wash my clothes at, at, at headquarters. It means a lot of things. And I am honored to share that responsibility with Thrive. I also am the Metro Atlanta Health Services HIV Planning Council Chairman. Ooh, that's a lot of words. <laughs> and I say all that to say this. It was when Larry said, Morris, I'm going to put you in this support group that I begin to thrive. And I'm really honored to be here because before this, this, this opportunity came for me to be a part of this, I had a young man call me and say, hey, Morris, I'm having an issue. Malcolm, you, Malcolm knows I'm telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth. He's in a situation where he is being charged with not disclosing his status. And now I'm able to be here to not only encourage him, but to also speak words to his lawyer. This is amazing. I don't know if I knew what I was getting myself into, but I will say this, to whom much is given, much is required. And I am so excited to be here so that I can fulfill my requirements. And we are happy to have you. You know, when I, when I first came into to Thrive and I met Morris, Morris always had on something shiny. He always had on shiny shoes or a... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or a shiny hat. And I was like, okay, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's out there. But I realized that that's what attracts people to you. And that's why you get the work done. You know, somebody told me, I think it was our executive director, I think. Our executive director told us yesterday that, you know, 
Morris was linking a hundred people to care like a week or something like that. So, so we know that you are out there, you are doing the work and we so, so appreciate it. So let's start talking about this conference. I'm, I'm looking at the chat and I'm seeing people talk about how wonderful the, um, the conference was. How have things been for you? I'm gonna stick with ladies first, Octavia, go, cause I got mine ready. I got no. mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't, I didn't come into the the conference with high hopes because I have been to other online, and I was just like not happy about it. Um, but the open ceremony like blew me away, and like every session after that was like hitting it. It was on it, and I was like, wow, like it's very interactive. It's very engaging. Um. And like it was one of, and to me, it's the best online conference um, that I have ever been to. Um, but I do think about, you know, those individuals um, that this was their first conference. And like, I think about, you know, what that had to be like. And for some people, they create a family for the first time. Like some people, had never been able to say, you know what, I'm HIV positive, but they were able to like come to terms with it on their own. And I think that's what I love about High Neck. Like it, 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 it gave me the opportunity, you know, to see people that I have not seen in a long time. And you know, I can say that I, you know, did not come of age um, during the first, um, epidemic, but I, during this pandemic, I got a taste of what that felt like. And it was not a good taste to be isolated in your home because I didn't leave my home for a couple of weeks at one time. And like, I can just imagine how our people felt back then. And I say our people um, felt back then where they were isolated from people, you know, their family, their friends, you know, people were afraid to be around them because they didn't know what was going on. Like all of that stuff resonated with me. And I thought about people that did not have family during this time. And like to be a part of this conference, at least it gave people the opportunity to see those that they have not seen in 15 months. And like that was incredible because a lot of people um, that plan conference, a lot of them, they didn't even do it because they didn't know how to do it um, to this magnitude. And the fact that Hynek was uh, able to do it and get it right, it really set the bar for other conferences. Um, and again, I am so, so honored to be here because like I say, just listening you know, to the panelists and you know, like seeing different individuals like, you know, be able to tell their truth and like, you know, see it on their face. Like this is the first time they ever been in a space where they didn't feel like an anomaly or they didn't feel like people were pathologizing them. And like all of that, even though this was a virtual conference, all that was able to be seen. And especially if you are a person that is in tune with yourself and you're a person that is connectable and you are personable, like you will see all of that. And like the fact that like we had an open mic night, like that's something that High Neck always does. And it's always the bomb diggity. And the fact that we were able to continue all of the things that we normally do when we're together, we were able to do that virtually. I was amazed. And so for me, like I said, I would not have wanted to spend this time anywhere else. And I'm so thankful. And I'm not going to lie, I am looking forward to High Neck Five when we are all in person because, baby, we are going to do the thing, honey. So that's what I got from it. Thank Listen, you. Come that's on, Mr. Miles. Come on you. and bring us on in. So before we do that, can I ask you, I, I want to ask you something, Morris, that yes. somebody here may not have gotten. Okay. What in the world does you 
equals you mean to you? And what does it mean for everybody that's attending here? What does oh, wow. it mean for folks in positive, who are involved with positive to positive? You equals you. Undetectable means untransmittable. Say it one more time, because I want people to hear it, and I want the translation to get it real, real good. Undetectable means undetectable equals untransmittable. You know, again, this year makes 15 years of being HIV positive. For the first 10, I didn't do it right. I didn't like my medicines. I didn't like the people that gave me the medicines. I didn't like the research behind the medicines. I didn't like the medicines. Although I wanted to get to a place, undetectable didn't mean what it meant until it said untransmittable. Now, I think I'm a little bit cute. Not right now, because I got a little bit of hair on my face. But I'm still on the market. And what I know is when the time comes and oh, does it come, I know that should I want to swing from chandeliers or go outside to the back, that as long as I am undetectable, I am not passing HIV to someone that I care about, that I just met, that I swipe left or right on. What it means is I'm doing the right thing first for me. The other thing means that my HIV ain't no crime. And even if I was detectable, it's still not. And so what you equals you means to me is a, is a level of freedom. That's, I, I think that's the best thing to say. You equals you is a level of freedom that we, uh, I, I, I hope that we all aspire to get to. Now, it, V does not equal V. That means your value is not determined upon that. But we want to get to you equals you. Amen. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Octavia. Unfortunately, we've got to end this block, but you two have been a blessing to Tori and I and everybody on this call. We really, really thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. And Octavia, you just revealed something. You're from the Bronx. Before we go, where in the Bronx are you from? Because I, I was born in, I was, I was, I grew up in Castle Hill. Well, I live right now. I'm in the Prospect um, East Street, my area. So I am considered West Farm Square. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So thank you all. And again, I just want to leave with the words from my mentor, Avery Wyatt. People do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Amen. Period. Yes. Ashe, thank you. Thank you. Both. Thank, thank you, you both you. for being here. All right. So, Tori, what's next? What, 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 what do you want to do now? What, what, do you, what do you think? So, I think we should shut up and listen to some more folks talk about their experiences here. Um, so, let's go into our second phase. So, what we did, everyone who's paying attention today, we actually broke this down kind of into three, maybe four, technically four different areas. So, that we could focus on different aspects of the community. And you all could hear from folks who've been a part of this fight and a part of this conference from the very beginning. Um, so let's introduce our next folks. I have names and emails pulled up. Um, and next, we're in block two, right, Malcolm? We are in block two, so we're going to hear from uh, Bully first, right? Yes, come on with it. This is my girl right here. Deirdre, Deirdre Speaks Johnson, please bring on your camera and your microphone. Looking forward to you. Love you, darling. Hello, 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 everyone. Am I the only person right this second? Oh, this no, ma'am. Oh, no, I'm doing bully. I, you know what? This is what happened when you're doing 5 million things at the same time. I'm doing the call to action from bully. You're doing the call, to action. Doing doing the call to action for bully. Yes, you're doing a call right. to action for bully. See, this is what happened when you do a five million things all at the same time. So while I'm pulling that up, um, hello, 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 everyone. My name is Deidre Johnson Speaks. Most of you know me as Deidre Speaks. And um, I am having a storm at this moment. So uh, if my uh, internet goes wonky, please forgive me. 
just that ding of living in the country of rural Virginia. I'm li living in Petersburg, Virginia. I am a woman living with HIV for the past 21 years and thriving in this moment and have been a, a part of Bully, which was the Black United Leadership Institute, which I attended back in 20, 2018. It's my first experience. And during that time, we have created um, now the Black United Leadership um, initiative. So in that process, here's what we came up with as a call to action. This is a call to action. We are black, brown, beautiful, and have power that when harnessed and supported will end the epidemic and the intersections that impact us. We no longer want to be commodified and paraded around like modern day slaves on sale. We are demanding for leadership of organizations to be reflective of our communities. We are leading and should be supported as leaders. We want and deserve to be valued and well paid for our value. We are subject matter experts in HIV and being criminalized and policed. We are tired of being oppressed, suppressed and depressed by decrepit and archaic systems. We are demanding healing, restorative justice, and transformative justice, decriminalizing loitering and sex work. We are standing in solidarity, demanding action to take place. We are here, we matter. This is a call to action. This is a call to action. This is a call to action. Thank you. Thank you, Deidre. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Thanks for the for the bully folks. Love you. We appreciate you. And let's move to the next uh, group, the next institute group that is going to do a call to action. The Latinx group. Do we have Alfredo Gonzalez on the call? Hello. <clears throat> How you doing, Alfredo? I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you very much. I hope mm -hmm. everybody else is well and cool. Um, I'm going to read a small uh, report that I wrote uh, about the Latino Institute. I can do it. I wrote it in English, but I have a Google translation in Spanish, so I can do it either way. Uh, you tell me which one works better. No, you do whatever is comfortable for you. <laughs> well, you know, it, uh, it's, uh, it's not much of a difference. Let me do it in English then. <clears throat> uh, the first Latino Institute of the HIV is not a crime academy took place on Friday, June 4th. Uh, for two hours, 27 participants had the opportunity to hear and interact with three speakers and that discuss HIV criminalization in Puerto Rico, the US and Latin America. In Puerto Rico, for example, there are no laws criminalizing HIV. The legal harassment uh, you know, of people living with HIV and those perceived as such uh, uh, comes uh, through the penal code, say Rosa Viles, direct, uh, executive director of the uh, response movement for HIV. I'm sorry, I didn't translate that one to English, but uh, that's more or less it. Mm. HIV criminalization among Latinos, Latinx in in the US is hard to assess uh, because of lack of data. Alejandro Costa, uh, Director of Public Policy and Advocacy for the Southern AIDS uh, Coalition, pointed to the difficulty uh, of knowing the dimension and characteristics uh, of the impact of HIV criminalization among Latinx uh, when demographic information is collected uh, for just two ethno-racial groups, Blacks or Whites an issue uh, denounced long and widely uh, in our community. Speaking for, uh, from Argentina, Elena Reynaga, the Executive Secretary of the Network of Women Sex Workers of Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, narrated the history, evolution and politics of her organization. Uh, she referred to one lesson she learned in 27 years of regional activism with the word publish and went on pointing to the need of documenting the experiences and disseminating information about the affected communities 
and the activists defending them. Uh, the open discussion that followed included the participation uh, of members of the Mexican Network of Organizations Against HIV Criminalization, who contributed lessons uh, from the history of, of their organization. Um, the, uh, in, in the many subjects discussed, there are two that I want to uh, point out. Uh, well, one sort of conclusion. Uh, one is uh, the importance of educating prosecutors and other judicial personnel uh -huh. in general, particularly in the science of HIV. And the other one is the fact uh, that in, in Latin America, uh, low level uh, law enforcement officials uh, have uh, a tremendous amount of power deciding what is a crime and who is suspect, which implies that by the time that a defendant reaches the court, uh, several of the human rights have already been violated. Um, I could have written something to, uh, like a closing statement, but uh, this is as far as I got. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alfredo. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to the Latinx Institute. We appreciate all the work that you guys did during this HINAC, and will continue to do after. So now we're going to bring on the sex workers, the sex workers uh, um, institute, with Chris Sardina. Hey, sex hey, workers Chris. in the house. Thank you. Um, this is my fourth, so I've been to all the high necks and made some lifelong friends that um, will always be in my heart. And I can't wait till next time so I can come and meet a lot of y'all and, and also to hug the ones that, that I know. Um, I'm going to get in here. In 2018, sex workers came together, Desiree Alliance. I'm from Desiree Alliance. I'm the national director and um, we're sex worker rights. And we, we fight on the federal level down to the local level. We fight for all of our rights. And one of the things in 2018 Desiree Alliance did is we hosted a gathering of sex workers across the country from, you know, everywhere down to street based up, you know, through, to porn. So we had a gamut of all different colors, like sexualities, identities, and we came together to, um, you know, I thought we need a we need rights and principles too. And um, modeling ourselves after the Denver principles. And, and I just want to say thank you, Sarah and Hynak, for giving me, um, for giving sex workers the opportunities to get in there. And so it got me thinking and, and I got everybody together and I came into the room and I, I and now I know how those, those, uh, those guys in Denver did it. I mean, I was pulling my hair out, you know, trying to come to some kind of consensus on how we will approach everything we do in sex worker rights. So I can imagine exactly what the hell they went through, um, you know, because it, it was, you know, I fell on my knees when it was done. It was four things and it was just like, you know, we've come to the river Jesus, here we are. We finally got here and it took us two days. And um, so I'm gonna share that with you and then blow out of here because today is my birthday and, um, now I, I need to know where it is. Where is it? Um, can somebody put that on for me? Let's see. Oh, okay. So my bad. Okay. I can put it on for me. Shit. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to share that and I'm going to read it to you. It's the National Sex Worker Anti-Criminalization Principles. We offer up these principles to our movement as a working template for a national platform. Number one, the general statement. We advocate for people impacted by labor issues, social stigma and criminalization, and we condemn any attempts at restricting our autonomy and self-determination. 
Number two, recommendations for all people. Support us in our struggle for justice and human rights and against those who would deny us access to the same services or rights because of our work. B, respect us as the experts in our lives without assuming we are flawed in some way. C, we do not want punitive intervention. Number three, recommendation for sex workers. We insist on sex worker leadership at every level of decision making on policies around sex work. B, we reserve the right to ourselves the rights to maintain our own health. C, we demand the right to speak, access all public channels of communication, to choose those who speak for us and to be recognized by the media, public officials and others as the authorities of our own experience. The rights of sex workers, to make our own sexual relationship choices without others invalidating our consent. B, to access social, medical and justice services without discriminating, start that one again, discrimination in any form, including but not limited to gender, sexuality, race, citizenship status, or the way we choose to work. C, to have our choices in bodily autonomy respected, including the right to decline services, to be free to work in a manner of our own choosing without onerous regulation that is disrespectful of our agency and autonomy. And so that being said, how do I get back on here? Oh shit, okay, hold on. Boy, did I blow that one. Um, you're okay, Chris. We appreciate you. <laughs> so, um, you know, just just to, um, you know, the um, just to come to that modeled after the Denver principles. I mean, I still cry when I read it because this is how we approach us. Now right. we have our own set, and we don't have to take no shit from anybody now because we got a platform. And um, so, you know, hopefully in the, in the next, um, you know, in everything we do, these, these are our principles and that's modeled after the Denver principles. So we're really grateful for that. So that being said, today's my birthday. I'm gonna go eat and get this hair cut. <laughs> Happy, birthday Happy birthday and thank Chris. you so much. Thank you. I love thank you Thank you so much for that. All right, Tori, who's next? So next, uh, we're actually going to switch to our next block because we did such a great job. Um, are we doing community commitments right now, Mel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The community commitments from the white folks dismantling racism, a yes. statement and response. So we've got Pat, Jamo, Lane Bryant, and Kathleen Griffith. Perfect. Okay. So happy to have each and every one of you. Are they on? Hi, Mom. Hi. Yeah. I'm on. Uh, All right. There you go. There you go. All right. So don't 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 make me start the the Oscar music on you guys now. <laughs> Please God no. Get the hook and pull, pull me off. Well, hello everybody. It's really nice to have been part of HiMac. Um, and this is my second. And so I truly miss seeing everybody in person, but this has definitely been the best um, um, virtual workshop that I've been to. So this is a statement from the white folks at HINAC for, um, we're reading it now at the closing session. A number of people met May 28th for a white folks dismantling racism at HINAC pre-institute. During this time, we developed the outline for the statement, committing to ongoing work to challenge white supremacy and anti-Blackness. To our family, living with HIV, and our allies. We, as white people in our HIV decriminalization moment, acknowledge the harm that has been done and the harm that we, will, we have done to our Black, Indigenous people of color, comrades in our advocacy work. We seek to first and immediately stop doing harm to our BIPOC comrades, to make amends for damages 
that have been done and to work for transformative and collective liberation. We acknowledge the long history of systemic racism, institutional privilege, past and present violence against BIPOC communities, and the disproportionate impact of HIV criminalization on those communities, especially Black people. We have benefited from white supremacy as it is ingrained in our thinking, relationships, workplaces, systems, and institutions. We acknowledge that power and privilege has usually centered white leaders over BIPOC leaders, ignoring the intersectionality of mass incarceration, over-policing, and state-sponsored violence and racism. We know that our actions will speak louder than our words. We commit to the following as a start. We commit to taking responsibility for our learning and to educate other white people in the HIV movement, not relying on people of color to teach us. We commit to doing the work both within organizations and within ourselves that is necessary to dismantle systems of oppression, to actively ally with black, Latinx and indigenous communities and to center leaders of color. We commit to being brave rather than safe, to having uncomfortable conversations about racial injustice and to demanding collective liberation for all. We commit to including racial equity in all of our HIV modernization and decriminalization conversations. We commit to being the comrades of our BIPOC family needs, to speaking up against racism and anti-Blackness even when especially when it's uncomfortable, to stepping back to actively support, listen to, and learn from BIPOC leaders. We know that anti-racism training is an ongoing process. So we commit to holding white folks dismantling racism sessions throughout the year, elevating and centering BIPOC leadership, challenging those who invite us to participate on panels or other forums, that are not centering BIPOC voices or are not re representative of our community. Transparency and accountability to BIPOC communities and regularly reassesses and regularly reassesses and reevaluates our to reevaluate our progress. If you'd like to join any of the work that we've been doing as white people working to dismantle racism, you can please contact Bob Pardell, and that's Barb at PWN usa.com and can add to our list. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We really appreciate the work that you guys are doing. This was, that was awesome. We appreciate you. And you beat the uh, Oscar music too. Good. So. <laughs> and so now you thought that first block was powerful. Well, we're, we're in the second block, in the second half of the second block, and you thought that what those folks were powerful? Wait till you see what we got coming up for you now. First, we are, go well, we are going to have calls to action from our partner organizations, the USPLHIV Caucus, Thrive SS, PWN, CIRO, and the Transgender Law Center. First up, Wahida from the caucus, talk to us. Well, good evening, good people. Good evening, good people. Good evening. Yeah. How so, are you? Uh, I'm doing great. This is my fourth um, high neck and not my last. I haven't missed any of them and it's been fire. I just want to say that. Um, so I should just go right ahead, right? Yes, please. Okay, so um, the United States People Living with HIV Caucus, also known as HIV Caucus, or also known as Caucus, we have a caucus, all right? Um, compromise, we're a compromise of organizations, coalitions and networks and client groups of people living with HIV. We are predicated upon the principle of uh, self-empowerment, uh, and self-determination, just like in the Denver Principles, when I'm gonna read a quote from the Denver Principles that we should form our own caucuses um, to be our representatives in the media, to choose our own strategies. And that's what we've done. 
the caucus collectively speaks a unified voice for people living with HIV. And a lot of the groups that are already here today are a part of this amazing, amazing caucus, right? So I just need to say, thinking about Thrive and thinking about Zero and Positive Women's Network, Positively Trans, Reunion Project, all of these groups together are speaking collectively in a collective voice and we hear you, right? And I just wanna say that our call to action is that is that we are we are we are determined to uh, to oppose? Let me just find my space here. Yeah, we're going to stand in opposition to any laws that criminalize HIV and that are used to criminalize people of color and other communities who are marginalized by the dominant narrative. That is sex workers. That is Latinx people. That is women. That is undocumented immigrants. Right. So whatever um, the, the calls of action are to hear, we're gonna elevate that, we're gonna amplify, we're gonna amplify those other calls to action because this is, because we are bringing all of you along with us. We're bringing along women, we're bringing along people with trans experience, we're bringing along black men who have sex with men, we're bringing along women, we're bringing along people who are aging with HIV, we're bringing all of you along as a part of this caucus. And so our call to action will be amplified, will amplify all of everybody's call to actions here. And, um, and I wanna say this one last thing is that our needs for dignity and access are too legit for us to quit, right? And we will fight to the better ends, right? For dignity and justice for all people living with HIV, um, not just in the United States, but around the world. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wahida. Thank Love. you so much. Yes, that was amazing. That was amazing. So um, as we continue on, that's going to be hard to follow up. That was powerful. But um, I am going to bring on our brother. Every If you're on this call, he's your brother. Um, and he is here representing a call to action from one of the uh, partner uh, organizations. Um, Larry Walker, my brother, my hair twin, uh, <laughs> all that you. other good stuff. I love you. I love you. I love you fiercely. I love everybody on this call and I love us, our community. In the docufilm, A Color, Colors on the Wall, that detailed the diverse demographics of uh, experience of diverse demographics of people living with HIV, aging with HIV. My brother and my hero, uh, Nathan Townsend, would say to his childhood self, to his younger HIV positive self, that the good news is that the bad news was wrong. They were wrong when they said that we would live only weeks. They were wrong when they said that we should acquiesce to taking fistfuls of medications. They were wrong when they said that we were abominations. They were wrong when they said that our diagnoses were judgments from God. This says to me that we have the power to reframe, to rewrite, to abolish the narratives that we are criminals because we are people living with HIV who dare to, to, to practice pleasure. That we are victims because somehow, somewhere, some people gave us HIV. That we are undeserving of pleasure because now we live with an HIV diagnosis. They were wrong. We can defy the, 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 the CDC when they say that one in two of us Black gay men will contract HIV in his lifetime as if Black gay men living with HIV would just idly stand by and watch that happen. They were wrong when they just said that we didn't have a thriving community. They were wrong when they said that we wouldn't ride or die for our own protection. We are powerful beyond measure. And we have the courage to love ourselves so much, so fully, that it has the power to encourage all of our communities to love themselves as well. We will not settle for being passive participants in our own liberation. I need to hear y'all, I need to feel y'all say that. We will not settle for being passive participants in our own liberation. We will pull up. We will square up, we will protest, we will pride our elected officials, we will train up a squad of soldiers to, to engage the tables that exist, and we will train our soldiers to build tables when they needed to be. 
We will fight for our lives. We will fight as did Marsha P. Johnson. We will fight as did Bayard Rustin. We will fight as did Marlon Briggs. We will fight as did so many of our ancestors before us. We are more than enough. We are more than enough in any effort for our liberation must include all of us, all of our lights, all of our histories, all of our hands and hopes for the future. We, and anything that negates that will be flawed and uns unsuccessful. Lastly, I want to be, I'm here to remind you that the road to black and brown and trans and queer liberation goes through black and brown, trans, queer and disabled communities. Our liberations are linked, thus our efforts should be also. We must commit ourselves to defying siloed approaches. The, the black queer women that founded Black Lives Matters, the black trans women who founded SNAPCO, the beautiful women living with HIV who run and operationalize PWN are great examples of this. As a black gay man, I must be as adept at talking about the violence and overcriminalization and murder that befalls black trans women as I am with talking about where I land on the care continuum for HIV. Let's, let's use our personal agency as well as our professional agencies to defy the odds. The good news is that the bad news was wrong. We can end HIV. We can reach and will reach liberation, but it will take all of us to win. Thank you all. My brother, my big younger brother, thank you, thank you, I love you, thank you. PWN, what say you? I can't say nothing right now. <laughs> I can't say shit right now. Oh my God. We could take a moment to just breathe that in while I yes. figure out how to share this screen. I love you, Larry, my son. I love you. I love everything about you. That was just, whew. Okay, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna do this. Um, you all, I, I can't even come up with words to say, I'm kind of like emotionally spent over this past couple of days. And, um, but I'm here on, to do this. Wait, let me get it right. Okay, so y'all can see my screen? You can. Okay, but I'm trying to hit present and it wants to take its time. Can't hold on. I'm trying to get to the present button. I knew this was going to happen. Oh, present. What am I doing wrong? Can y'all see my screen? We I, can. But it won't let me hit present. So the show must go on. Let me figure out how to click, how to. Um, Oh my God, this was my fear. Hold on. Don't worry about it, you got it, take your time. Okay, hold on just a minute. I'm not sure why there is a... Just a minute y'all, why is my screen like this? So I am not gonna keep holding this up. Let me find y'all again, because I knew I was afraid this might happen. And so maybe I brought it on myself, but now it won't even let me. So what I am here to talk to y'all about today, and I may not just can share my screen. So that's what I'm gonna do, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna share my screen. And I'm gonna just talk to y'all and tell y'all what I got to say. So, this is really embarrassing. So some of you were here earlier when uh, you might've been here that we are uh, when uh, doing one of our sessions when folks were here talking about an issue called molecular HIV surveillance. Can y'all hear me? Yes. 
Okay, so we are here, our call to action is, we are here to ask you all to sign on to, to, uh, to agree to a moratorium. And if you don't know, people living with HIV need consent and safeguards on our data. The, the practice of molecular surveillance or cluster tracing our detection is a practice where our bodily data, our, our, our person, our, our HIV genomic sequence data is taken from us doing a routine, routine medical procedures, either for uh, when you first get diagnosed or resistance testing, and then share it without our consent. You may not have known that, but I want everyone listening to leave here today knowing that it is being done everywhere. And if you know that you are a person living with, with HIV, it's, it's likely that your data your bodily food, your bodily material is already in the MHS system. Molecular surveillance is one of the four pillars of the ending the epidemic framework, the respond pillar. So it is being ingrained in everything that the federal government does. Our data is stored, it, our data is transmitted to CDC and it can live in other databases like the Los Alamos database or, or somewhere else. Even though the CDC has implemented this without our consent, without our permission and without our knowledge, they have not provided any assurances about where and how this data can be shared between federal agencies, the Department of Justice, Homeland Security. And at the state level, there is a big difference in the way that policies and different state laws provide protections for our health data and to share that data. So we don't know what can be shared with the law enforcement if they're asking for information as a part of a prosecution uh, for HIV criminalization that anyone living with HIV can be subjected to. Although the data is de-identified when it goes to the CDC, when it comes back and is used by the states, trust me, it's re-identified and that's why they're using it to target public health efforts or may show up on one of your doorsteps. PL HIV networks demand that molecular HIV surveillance is halted until the CDC, the National Institutes for Health work with us and our networks to develop acceptable standards and guidance for that data collection, sharing, use, and informed consent practices. There are national standards for data protection from law enforcement there must be national standards for data protection from law enforcement, immigration authorities, and for criminalization proceedings. So all you jurisdictions that are doing EHE, are, you need to be required to make commitments to protect the rights of people living with HIV in order to receive surveillance funding. So we are asking you all, and um, Kamaria Cyril will be dropping a link into the chat with a, with a uh, sign on to sign on to our petition to stop MHS, to stop molecular surveillance, to stop using our data without our consent until there are safeguards in place to protect our privacy, to protect our data. HIV is a public health threat, not us. And they need to stop treating us like widgets and respect our humanity. Larry said it, the good news is that they were wrong. Well, they're wrong again. I mean, the good news is that they were wrong. And the wrong and the good news is and that they were wrong about this. And we must ask for a moratorium. And we ask you to share this link and we ask you to sign on to stop it. We have rights, fight HIV, not us. Thank you all. Okay. Did y'all hear that? Oh, we heard it all, Queen. Thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Benita. Yes. Um, so as we we have to push on because time only allows us to. Um, but those are some good words to live by. So fight mm -hmm. HIV, not us. Um, so with that being said, we'd like to bring up next, uh, introduce, uh, invite next, uh, Sean from the Zero Project. Uh, not Sean, Stephen, Stephen? Bryce, Stephen. Stephen Bryson, yes. Thank you so much. Hey, Stephen. Uh, yeah, me and Sean get mixed up all the time. Don't worry. Y'all look all like right. the, the, the resemblance is, is amazing. 
Lindsay's, yes. <laughs> um, I just want to say this is my first serial project. Uh, sorry, um, HIV is not a crime that I've attended. Um, I actually joined the serial project on April 15th. So it's it, they threw me to the fire right away. And when I tell you that um, this fire has been amazing, I literally just can't tell you how full I am from everything that I have uh, experienced this week. And for those of y'all that missed um, last night's um, spoke open mic night, that was powerful. Um, I cannot wait to see the recording of that. Everything has just been so amazing. Um, and all of the sessions have just, I feel like I've met so many of you, even though we are only seeing each other through the computer screen. And I cannot wait until two years from now when this is in person, because um, I know the energy in the room is just going to be amazing. Um, I just want to shout out the team here at Zero because when I tell you the work that they put in that I uh, witnessed behind the scenes has just been absolutely amazing from Sean, Tammy, Kamaria, Cindy, um, Gonzalo, Kevin, everybody, everybody put their heart and soul in to make sure that this, this was a very successful um, conference. And when I tell you the best conference that I've uh, been to virtually, I, I do not like virtual conferences, but when I tell you this, this was it, this was it. Um, and I wanted to give a call to action from Ciro. Um, as I don't know if y'all know, but I am the C first Ciro Legal Fellow at the AIDS Law Project of Pennsylvania. And I was hired specifically to combat the criminalization of HIV. And when I tell you that I am so motivated to get back to my desk and just and get to work. And we need to have a unified, inclusive, multifaceted front with meaningful engagement, with people living with HIV, that we can work together, work together to stop all HIV criminalization. We must educate the ignorant and erase the stigma. We have to do this together. People that are positive, people that are negative, my trans brothers and sisters, my Everybody, I don't I like, I, I don't like the term BIPOC myself, but when, when I tell you the whole rainbow, it's not just the rainbow, but every color, uh, every, the melanin strong and the melanin deficient, everybody together, we must do this. So I just wanna say thank you for inviting me into this space. And when I tell you uh, this, this flame, it, it's been lit. Thank you. Thank you, Steven. We appreciate you. And now the transgender law center. Oh, myself flaming? No. <laughs> we can still hear you, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, welcome, Stephen, to the family. So, uh, hi, everyone. Um, I am Cecilia, and I work for Transgender Law Center. Transgender Law Center is the largest national trans-led organization advocating for a world in which all people are free to, be, to define themselves and their, their futures. Grounded in legal expertise and committed to racial justice, TLC employs a variety of community-driven strategies, of course, positively trans is one of them, to keep transgender and gender non-conforming people alive, thriving, and fighting for liberations. And as I mentioned, you know, like we um, have a project called Positively Trans. It's a network um, of um, trans people living with HIV. And that's because like we believe that trans people living with HIV are capable of forming our own network telling our own stories and developing our own advocacy strategies. And, and, it, and Positively Trans is led by trans women of color living with HIV and it address inequities, stigma and discriminations nationally and in our local communities through community driven research and leadership development and storytelling. And so if you want to check out our reports, um, you just have to go to um, this page, I just posted the link in a second. There you go. Um, and, um, and my call to action to you all is very simple because I think that these are all the same things that other people have already said before. We've been criminalized because of our health conditions. We've been criminalized because of our skin color and we've been criminalized because of our immigration status and 
we've been criminalized because of our gender identity. And um, for that, you know, we um, are experiencing, you know, like a heightened number of um, anti-trans bills being introduced. Luckily, a lot of them have died or um, have been postponed, delayed um, indefinitely. But this is when we have to invite you to join our fight. And in order to do that, um, I would like you to go to um, the Transgender Law Center homepage. So if you're on, on, um, if you're on your computer, you can just pull out your um, phone and go to Transgender Law Center. And on the, th on the homepage on the top, you will see Trans Agenda for Liberation. And under that, that Trans Agenda for Liberation, there is a little button that say sign the pledge. And that is where it will take you to the actual five pillars of Trans Agenda of um, Trans Agenda for Liberation created and drafted by the communities, you know, like that um, community leaders have like spent many, many meetings, you know, get together in the last few years, you know, to put this together. You know, it's a community led guide towards the world we deserve. Trans people hold the knowledge, power, and joy to create future where we can all not only survive, but thrive. This agenda addresses the urgent political, legal, and social violence enacted against our communities while channeling trans imaginations to bring our boldest visions to life. The trans agenda grows out of the work that communities and individuals are already doing and points towards work that still needs to be done. So I invite you, if you have your phone now, click to that page, sign that pledge, you know, like um, work with us in order to transform our government to one that we can all feel safe and all feel free. Um, and that's my call to action to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you so much, Cecilia. You know, I absolutely love you. We appreciate you for being here. And let me make sure that everybody understands. Trans might be new to you, but it's not new. Um, thank you, Cecilia, for living in your truth and showing us how to do it. And, and, and thank you so much, uh, Octavia and everybody else. And thank you, JMO, because we have to understand everybody that, I, that falls under the trans umbrella doesn't identify he, as he or she. So thank you, JMO, for being here today also and adding your part, um, because we all are subject matter experts in our own lives and on our own experiences. And we thank you all for showing up and being a part of this today. Um, so with that being said, I think now we go into our last block of speakers, don't we, Malcolm? Because we're yep. getting into the closing. And, and also, while the folks are speaking, go and grab you something to drink because we're going to do a toast after this next section. Um, so now we're going to do our state call-outs, and uh, we are going to start with Connie Shearer from Nevada. Connie, there you go. Hi there. Everyone, thank you. Um, oh, I thought I put myself back on mute. Um, thank you so much for inviting us in here. Thank you for sharing space. Um, it's amazing. This is my second Hynac. Um, I won't take up much time. Let's see if I can, there we go. Um, it's like, oh, sorry. There we go. Um, so our, our bill, SB 275, uh, that was just recently passed, it was sponsored by Senator Dallas Harris, and it also renewed the advisory task force on HIV exposure modernization for the next interim here in Nevada. Before we modernize a law, they, um, they have to convene a task force to decide if they need to modernize the law. So, and Nevada is unique also in meaning that we only meet every odd year from February to June, about 120 days. You know, just like everything else, we like to keep it fast and loose and we, but we get a lot done. Um, so looking ahead during this next year and a half, we wanna focus on ensuring diverse appointments to that task force. Our chairs have begun emailing community members, encouraging new participation, specifically um, impacted communities, um, BIPOC, our indigenous community right here in Nevada, um, not in, in Las Vegas, uh, across Nevada, there are many um, indigenous communities. So they were trying to get them more involved. Um, 
Next, we are going to be reviewing more state law over the next um, year and a half to find um, any problems within there. So while we were looking through the laws, even the ones that we modernized outside of that, there are already multiple instances of terms like infected. Um, but the good news is SB 275 adds a statement of intent in it that state laws should use people first language that is respectful duplicative uh, references to communicable diseases, HIV and AIDS should be avoided, um, and we're planning to hold them accountable on that. And we plan on expanding issues that our coalition engages on because, um, as the legend has taught us, we are not single issue humans and the best way to build power is to bring allies to our table. Um, and I kept it real short and sweet for you all. That's where Nevada is at and um, that's where we're looking to move forward. We are super power <laughs> charged right now. Um, this Senator, Senator Dallas Harris, let me tell you, if you've not Googled her, please Google her. This is one badass lady. Let me tell you when those senators were, because whenever they heard we were trying to take away that felony and make it a misdemeanor, and not only that, but if you, you know, if you're on medication, if you are, you equals you, that that misdemeanors dropped entirely. So one senator was, he raised his hand and he's like, did I hear you correctly? We're going to, you know, take away that felony and they're not even going to be charged with a misdemeanor. And she's, and she's like, well, yeah, Senator, but actually that mindset is the problem here. And I was like, Ooh, sis, you tell him because <laughs> I was up there yelling at my computer and um, and I did that two or three times and every time she just kept telling him and finally, you know what Connie Rose did for the first time in her life, I set my ass down and I let her tell them. <laughs> so I am so impressed with this with this legislator with this legislator we have right now. Um, She's committed to ensuring people first language. She's committed to even convening committees to hold these people accountable. Whenever I told her the issues that I was having here, you know, with like having my, my caseworkers not respond to my emails. And she's like, well, you know what? We can just create a committee, make men, men hold them accountable. And I was like, wait a minute, I, what do you mean? We can do that? She says, girl, we can do whatever we want. I was like, all right, I just set my ass down. So, I'm feeling pretty good right here. That's where I'm going to end and hand off to everybody. And, but thank you. I would not be sitting here today if I did not come to Hynek in 2018. I would not be sitting here. So thank all of the training from PWN, all of the training from Ciro, all of the training from the, 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 the webinars that you all have put on, thank you. Because you're making sure that individual advocates like myself who are not working at an agency that we are still able to, to have our voice heard. Um, and that, that, that creates impact and change. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. And next we have Idaho. Kevin, you with us? There you go. Hi, everyone from Idaho. Um, the Idaho uh, Coalition for HIV Health and Safety. We are going to continue moving forward with Carrie Thomas and all others unjustly uh, incarcerated since 1988 under Idaho Code 39608 in our thoughts and more, more importantly, in our hearts. Um, the things that we are gonna do as we move forward is try to figure out Idaho's political landscape. Believe it or not, we are on the precipice of becoming even, even more conservative. Um, we have we have, in the last 10 days, had Eamon Bundy announce his uh, candidacy for governor, which would mean that we could possibly end up with a QAnon um, uh, uh, administration, as well as a QAnon legislature. But we know with careful planning and the, and the proper uh, work, we can figure out a way to navigate ourselves through this and, and continue the work. We're going to continue building our, our people living with HIV membership in the state coalition. And we are going to plan for a normal lobby day in 2022 when we can go speak to our legislators uh, in person and keep moving forward until Idaho is in the reform list. Thanks, everyone. And I hope you've really enjoyed your time at HIMAC. Thank you, Kevin. We appreciate you. Next, we have Texas. Tana, are you on?
I know there was, uh, in the beginning, we were talking about what we didn't know whether it was gonna be Texas or not. So let's just continue to move. Um, Georgia, Eric, Eric sent me a text, but I don't know if he had to go because he's not on. So I, as a member of the Georgia HIV Justice Coalition, I will jump in. I don't know what the call to action was going to be, but I do know that uh, Senate Bill 164 was at the crux of being passed um, before somebody threw a little something into the bill and therefore it did not pass, but it had overwhelming bipartisan support, literally. We had, um, we were evenly split between Democrats and um, uh, Democrats and Republicans on getting that law passed. And so next year we are going to work harder to get it finally passed. And at the same time, um, probably look at getting that uh, felony taken off the law. Right now in Georgia, it's a 10 year felony. Um, this law that did not pass last year would have brought it down to a five year and we settled for that. Um, but next year we'll, we will work so that we are not settling for that. So um, that's what Georgia is going to do. I'm sure if Eric were here, he would have a little bit more information, but we'll move on. So I, I see Tana is here. So Tana, what's going on in Texas? What you guys gonna do? You're still on mute. Tana, you're, there you go. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Tana Pradia, part of Positive Women's Network Houston, and I sit on the board of directors. Uh, one thing that is very uh, funny here is that Texas is a conservative state. And, you know, these laws like HB 369 will pop up again. And most likely in the next legislative session, we might see another one pop up. So what I'm asking everyone to do is join on to the Texas Strike Force. Stay informed with everything that we are doing around Texas. Uh, you know, it is important for especially me as an advocate, this is my first time being at HINAC and I have to say, it is amazing what all the states are doing. And, you know, my fight is to make sure that we all stay free and that we can change all these laws across the South, across the United States, but really, um, in Texas, they try to be sneaky, but we're not having it. I'm not having it as an advocate. And our ladies, uh, our network here, uh, Go GHA Houston Positive Women's Network, we're not having it. And our strike force, our strike force is amazing. They are true fighters. And you know you can't do this work without the allies. Allies are crucial to anything that uh, we do here in Texas because Texas is huge. So uh, it is very, very crucial. So join on to the Texas Strike Force. Stay informed with what Texas is doing and join this fight with us. All right, thank you. And last but not least, in baseball, they call, you know, at the, you know, you want to have a good cleanup hitter. So we got a good cleanup hitter right now. Carrie Foote, tell us about what's going on in Indianapolis. I mean, in Indiana. Carrie, are you on? Wow, Carrie's not on. All right. Well, Tori. All right. Well, everybody, this is oh, oh I wait. See Carrie. Hold on. Okay, I, perfect I, timing. Perfect I, see timing. Carrie. I see Carrie. There so. she goes. We're How here. You doing, Carrie? We're here. <laughs> we, we're here trying to get on, but, but <laughs> my buddy and one of our founding members of HMN, Jacob, is going to give the update. So all of you keep on fighting strong, and I'll let Jacob take over from here. All, all right. right. Thank you, Carrie. It's a long time. Hey, Malcolm. Hey, oh, Jacob. <laughs> Uh, so one of the, one of the things we have done so far in Indiana is that we are we destigmatized the language of our laws in Indiana. So in our laws, it was very stigmatizing to where they say that if you have as part of Indiana laws, that if you have HIV 
you have to tell someone you have HIV and then someone can't criminalize you for saying that. Or a little spit, you can still get criminalized. So the laws now, it's changed the language. So moving forward, going into 2022, that's our short session. So in that short session, we are going to target a small bill. So when 2023 come, we can do, get rid of the whole law of Indiana. Uh, where we're not going to stigmatize anybody with HIV in those laws where you get a felony and cannot work anywhere because you are a criminal and also be stigmatized as a um, sexual offender. Uh, all as well, we also want to continue to build our, our group, our session, and also build relationships with diverse groups. More than this, more young people, more of people of color, uh, Latino, Asian, Pacific, and also West Indian, um, half West Indian. So I want to bring people from the West Indies, from the Caribbean, from Jamaica, from Haiti, from Trinidad and Tobago, and also the VI, the Virgin Islands. Uh, as well, we want to give kudos to all, the, we want to represent all the red states because Indiana is a very red state, as well as Texas, Idaho, Florida, Mississippi, in all the southern states, we are trying to, we understand the struggle in those red states because the red states are hard to move. Indiana is very hard to move because everybody has that same mindset of if you get HIV, you're going to die soon. So we're trying to move away from that. And also just keep fighting, keep on moving, keep on pushing. Even though we are in a realm of clouds of disparity and sadness, there's still light at the tunnel keep on fighting, and HIV is definitely not a crime. Amen. Thank you to all the state call outs. And we, I know we didn't get to any, but our time is growing short. And so Tori and I wanted to close out with a toast. So Tori, I'm gonna hand it off to you. And if you don't have a, a beverage and we ain't asking what's in the cup, we ain't gonna ask that question. Put, put something in the cup. And let's have a toast. Go ahead, Tori. Thank you. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you to everybody who was a part of this amazing conference. As I said, this is my first. Uh, it certainly will not be my last. Um, and I drink water because I'm over 50 and I was diagnosed 32 years ago. And so I realized how important water is, um, as I hope all of us do. Um, but sip, do whatever you want. And so this is an ode to HIV. Um, and this is the toast. So there was a time when we dared not speak its name, whether black or brown or white or tan, they all died just the same. When we feared and fared far worse than we do even now, when oppressive systems and stigma made us all look back and just say, wow. There was a time when three letters Three fucking letters to folks like us would spell the end. And they said, you're dirty, you're disgusting, it's a punishment, it's a sin. We remember those, so many of them who left us way too soon. Those who cried with us, who loved with us, and danced with us to many a tune. But now we rejoice in the spirit of all of our collective powers. Now we count victories by the years of life and not by those last painful dying hours. We remember with solemn hearts that our living is not in vain. And for every soul that's gone way too soon, we remember every single name. So today we toast for our lives and the living that's still yet to come, knowing that one day we won't be just winning. Instead, we will have already won. I love you. We love you. We thank you all. Here's to you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
and all and of other the, and, folks because everybody and the lady or gentleman everybody everybody yet yeah, correct i stand corrected everybody that was a great great high neck now let's go out there and do the work and get these laws changed we love you we thank you everybody have a very good and safe night bye bye <laughs> Thank you, Ciro. Thank you, Ciro. Thank you, Ciro.